good afternoon everyone this evening i'm going to demonstrate the mechanism of labor and by demonstrating the mechanism of labor it means the series of changes which occurs as the fetus is bypassing through the maternal pelvis it starts from first stage of labor till the baby is born and we are going to see how the baby passes through the maternal pelvis and we are having the principles that govern the mechanism of labor first of all i have a maternal pelvis which we have already assessed and it is adequate for vaginal birth it has all the parameters for adequate for an adequate gynecologic gyna pelvis and we have a fetus which is going to be our passenger to pass through the maternal pelvis and we show that this fetus is of normal size I have a colleague who is going to help me hold the pelvis so this is the mother and this is the fetus so by description we have the principles of mechanism of labor the first principle is descent takes place throughout. What does it mean? That if labor begins, this fetus will descend till it will go out. There is no time when it will recede. Then, principle number two is whatever part leads will meet the resistance of the pelvic floor and it will rotate through an eighth of a circle. Assume this is the leading part. As it comes, Somewhere it will meet the resistance of the pelvic floor muscles and it will rotate an eighth of a circle. That is principle number two. And principle number three is whatever part merges will pivot around the pubic arc. So after rotating, each part which will be born, it will be born around the subpubic arc. There is no part which will be born posteriorly or laterally. All the parts must pivot around the pubic arc. So those are the three principles which govern the mechanism of labor. Now we are going to have a description. In order for normal birth to occur, the lie of the baby should be longitudinal. What does it mean? That the fetal back should be longitudinal with the maternal spine. Then the presentation is cephalic. Presentation means what part is palpated at the lower pole of the uterus. And we say for normal labor, it should be the head, which is cephalic. Position should be left or right occipital anterior. So we are having the occiput. It should either lie on the left iliopectineal eminence or on the right iliopectineal eminence. So this is left occipital anterior or right occipital anterior. The attitude should be that of complete flexion. Attitude means the relationship of the fetal head to its limbs. So the hands should be on the chest, legs well flexed, and the head well flexed. So this is the attitude we call of complete flexion. And this attitude brings the presenting part to be the vertex, which is the smallest in diameter. And the presenting part is the posterior part of the parietal bone. The denominator, the denominator is the part of the presentation which will dilate the cervical os. And the denominator will be the oxpot. So let's get the description. We've said in the beginning of labor, descent will occur. And before engagement of occur, there may be no complete flexion. So it will be the suboccipital frontal diameter, with, which is 10 centimeters, plus the biparietal, which is 9.5 centimeters, which will present at the beginning of labor. So due to increased uterine contractions and retraction, more flexion will occur. And as flexion occur, 
we shall get the smallest diameters. That is the suboccipital pragmatic, which is 9.5, and the bipareto, which is 9.5, which will engage. And the engagement means most of the presenting part must have bypassed the pelvic brim. So due to more uterine contractions and retraction, more descent will occur. And as it occurs, it will meet the resistance of the pelvic floor, and then it will rotate an eighth of the circle. So after rotating, crowning will occur. That means the occiput will bypass the vaginal orifice, and it will not recede on contractions, meaning that in absence of a contraction, it will not go back, it will stay there. That is what we call crowning. So after crowning, more descent will occur, and then extension of the head will occur. And after extension of the head, restitution will occur. Restitution means there is the return of the head from the twist it made during inter internal rotation. So as it restitutes, the shoulders will also engage at the pelvic brim. So as they engage, they will descend and they will also meet the resistance of the pelvic floor muscles of which they will rotate an eighth of a circle. And after rotation, there will be internal rotation of the body, whereas there will be external rotation of the head. It means the shoulders are now in an anterior posterior diameter to, be, to also pivot below the pubic arc. So after that, the head will be borne by lateral flexion onto the mother's abdomen. So that completes the mechanism of labor.